This city loves some good gossip. And we've got our reliable sources in every corner of it, ready to give us a scoop. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Thanks for watching. Today, I bring you a brazen hit piece from the Washington Post, which we already knew was Democrat Party state media, but it's so bad that even their food critics are concocting propaganda to destroy their political opponents. So what could a guy known for his pizza reviews and his Barstool Sports website possibly do to outrage another far left Marxist in the media? Well, he organized a pizza festival to raise money and business for struggling pizzerias. <laughs> Washington Post activist Emily Heil then coerced advertisers and pizza shops taking part in the festival to renounce Portnay for things that she literally just made up. Then she wrote a hit piece lying about the fact that she was the one that concocted the entire thing. Portnay was also supposed to have an interview with Heil where he was going to tell his side of the story, but she then canceled that and then lied about it. And then it gets really good. But let me just lay this out real quick for you. Right after this quick capitalism break with this channel sponsor, Noble Gold. Do you want to take control of your financial future, but just don't know where to start Noble Gold Investments understands. Investing in precious metals may sound confusing, but the team at Noble Gold Investments make it easy. Right now, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free five ounce silver America the Beautiful bullion coin for qualified accounts. So why wait? Let's get started right now. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. The only gold company I trust. And remember, there is always risk in investment and there are no guarantees of any kind. So this all started a few days ago when Dave Portnay found out about this. He then calls Emily Heil to confront her on video and this is how it went. This is Emily. Hey Emily, this is Dave Portnoy calling. Uh, I'm recording you right now. You're reaching out to our advertisers and you're basically sending an email that says, to the effect, Dave's a misogenic racist. Do you want to defend yourselves advertising at this event, right? I'm sorry, what's your name, Dave? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm the guy you're writing the article about, Dave Portnoy. <laughs> Man. Good. No, I'm not, I'm not. I haven't said anything like that. I'm well, I, I, can, I can read if you want. If you want, I can read what you actually sent. I have it. A human. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, read because I, I sent a bunch of notes, so I want to make sure I know which one. Okay, uh, we are planning to write about the festival and how and how some of the sponsors and participants have drawn criticism by seemingly to associate themselves with Dave Portnoy, who has a history of misogynic comments and other problematic behavior. I want to make sure that Blank had a chance to respond to this, since the company is the most prominent and their partners of his festival. Oh, that's the one I sent to which was definitely the most pointed of them because- Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I really did want them to respond and I was hoping to get something from them. Do you think that's fair? That is pretty pointed. You said you didn't do it. Then I have the exact evidence of you doing it, so. I didn't say I didn't do that. I said I did, that was the one that was the most pointed. Well, no, you, you, that went before I, before I provided proof, you said you didn't really remember doing that. And then I read it to you and you're like, oh yeah, I did it that one time. So. You did do it. But what I worried about when we contacted you, I was worried that we would have sort of one shot to talk to you, right? And so what I wanted to do is make everything we were gonna, that we wanted to talk to you about before I reached out to you. And that's why, that's why I was waiting to call you. Like the Washington yeah. Post, which is a wildly left leaning publication, you have, things you've said you hate trump you hate elon not that i'm those people to think you're gonna give me a fair shake i wasn't born yesterday you really really don't hate these media people enough i'd show you the hit piece but it's behind a paywall and there's no way i'm paying for that anyway but the gist is that he's a horrible misogynist based on jokes that he made and a racist for mocking colin kaepernick it's becoming quite clear that if you're a prominent critic of the woke high priest then you become a target and they will destroy you so they had planned on having this meeting and then Emily Heil canceled on him and released the hit piece anyway, despite her being on video admitting that she was lying to his advertisers literally in order to generate controversy. Literally. Her whole motivation here was to cancel his pizza festival, which again was being done to raise money and awareness for these small businesses to keep them open. And this is where it gets really funny and really drives home why it's so important that Elon Musk got control of Twitter. So after the Washington Post posted this story on Twitter, community 
Liberty Notes came down hard. Per the Washington Post, this weekend, New York will host Dave Portnay's One Bite Pizza Festival. Participating pizzerias have had to navigate buzz around the festival and backlash against the Barstool Sports founder's controversial remarks and allegations of sexual misconduct. Note, the buzz and backlash was literally all concocted by Emily Heil. Community Notes fact check this, posting, a phone call between Emily Heil and Dave Portnay was shared prior to publication, in which the WAPO journalist admits to intentionally misleading advertisers into speaking negatively about One Bite Pizza Festival. They agreed to an interview the next day, but the Washington Post canceled. <laughs> Now, it turns out that it wasn't just Emily Heil involved in this hit piece. So if you're wondering who the hell would try and stop advertisers from supporting small businesses, it's this guy, Joe Rosenthal, who calls himself a, quote, food antagonist. <laughs> And just to remove any doubts about this guy's untethered narcissism, quote, positioning himself to be the, quote, conscience of the food industry. Listen, listen, listen. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Yeah, more like the Washington Post is positioning itself to be Mao's red guard. There is actually a good ending to this story. None of the advertisers have pulled out. Capitalism wins again. Okay, so that's all I've heard about this story up until this point. But if any new information comes out, I will share it with you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.